In the past, it was very common to work with XML data in JavaScript. That was how most data was received. However, with the introduction of JSON and the JSON object in JavaScript, all that changed. JSON is very easy to work with in JavaScript because you can convert it to a JavaScript object. However, the other day I had to do some work with XML data. And though it is not as nice as JSON, there is an XML parser available in browsers that make it much simpler to work with XML you can convert the XML to a document object model and then work with it using the same commands you use to work with the DOM. In this video, we will take a look at what is required to convert XML data and then take a look at how to work with it. Now, when you receive the XML data, it will come as a string. So the first step is to convert that string to an XML DOM. That is done using the DOM parser object. So to get started, let me jump to Sublime and we'll take a look at the XML data we'll be working with. Now here's the XML data. It has a scope tag and then inside of that tag there is a topics tag and then multiple page tags. This is some XML data that I have used in the past for courses. Basically, it defines a course. Each page is a page in that course that's used for training. And then the attributes and data inside that define what goes on that page. So how would we parse this XML data so that we could work with it? That's what we're going to take a look at. Now, over here in my JavaScript file, I have that same XML data, but I have it as a string because that's how you will receive XML data when you receive it in JavaScript. It will come as a string. So right now, it's just one long string. So to begin with, we need to convert that string to an XML DOM. So we start by creating a new DOM parser object. And that's done like this. I have a variable and I set it equal to new DOM parser. And so that creates the object for me. Then I can use that object to parse the string into an XML DOM. So here's what I'll do. I'll do one more line. I'm going to assign the XML DOM to a variable XML doc. So we'll set that equal to parser dot parse from string and then we need to pass in the string that we're going to parse so if we look up here that string is XML and then we want to indicate the format and we do that so all right so that will create an XML DOM which we can then begin to manipulate. So I'm going to use some console log statements just to show how we can grab some of the different data that's a part of this XML file. So first off, I want to show you how you'd grab specific tags. It's very simple to do. We take the variable that contains the XML DOM. In our case, it's XML doc. And we simply use the same command that we can use on the DOM. And that command is get elements by tag name. That's how we would retrieve certain tags from an HTML file. Well, we can do that on an XML file as well. So first off, I'm going to grab the topics tag, which if you remember, it's right below the SCO tag and it contains all of the pages. So that's what I'm going to grab first. Now, get elements by tag name, just like it does with the DOM. In an XML DOM, it will return a node list. And we can work with that node list similar to the way we work with arrays. It's not an array, but we can use some of the same 
techniques for working with it. For example, I would need to specify the first node. Even though there's only one topics tag, I still need to specify that I want the first node. So let's see what that returns for us. I'm going to save that, refresh, and then I'll show the console here. So here is our topics tag. If I open that up, you can see all of the page tags within it. So I was able to grab that particular topics tag. Now let's look at how we can manipulate it even more. Let's say I wanted the first page. I can use first child. Once again, another command that we use with the HTML DOM, we can use it here with an XML DOM. So let me save that, refresh, and there is our first page. So I could grab that and then I could use that data to display my first page in the course. So that's basically what I would want to accomplish by, by grabbing a page. Now, just like we can use first child, we can use last child. So let me change that. And here we have the very last page tag within the topics tag. So if I had multiple topics tag, it would depend which topics tag I was in. Now let's go back to the first child. Let me show you the XML here. In that first child, we have some text that's a part of that tag. So what I can do is I can get the first child, which is that first page, and then I can get the first child of that. Let's see what that returns. Refresh. And here we get the text, however, it is displayed as a text node. So what I have retrieved is a node. I haven't retrieved the actual value. And that's an important thing to be aware of. As you work with the XML DOM, just like with the HTML DOM, you retrieve nodes. So one way I could get the actual value of that node is simply do node value like this. If I save that, refresh, now I have the actual text for that. Now there's an easier way to do this, which I'll show you in just a minute. Let's uh, make a change to our console log statement. Let's grab a different tag now. I want to grab page. Let's see what that returns. If I grab the page tag, get elements by tag names. Remember, it's going to return a node list, so it will return all the page tags. Let me go ahead and save that and refresh. And I have a bunch of page tags here. And notice it looks similar to an array because it is a node list. So I can then access each of those individual page nodes using the same techniques. For example, I could get the first page Another way to get the first page, like that. Now if I refresh, there's my first page. Now something else I can do, when I get a, a node list like that, I may want to cycle through it with a loop. So I can get the length of that node list using the length property. Let's see how many pages I have. I have a total of six. So that would allow me to work with it in other ways. For example, I could use a for loop. Now, going back to the previous example where I retrieved this text that was a part of that first page tag, I said there's an easier way to do that. Well, let's take a look at that. I can retrieve the first node, page node, using zero. And then I can use inner HTML. Just like you can with the HTML DOM, you can use inner HTML with the XML DOM. Save that. And there's the text from that first page node. 
Now, what if I wanted to get the second page? Well, we can use next sibling and previous sibling just like we can use with the HTML DOM. So let's try next sibling. Save that, jump out, refresh, and there's the second page. Now, obviously, looking at the XML file that I have here, a lot is contained within attributes. And so there would need to be a way to get at those attributes. So let's look at how we would do that. Once again, it's a command you may be familiar with if you've used it with the HTML DOM. And that is simply get attribute. And then inside of parentheses, we specify which attribute we want to grab. So if I'm looking at the second page node, there is a title attribute there. And that should return chapter one. So let's see what we get. I'll save that and refresh. Sorry, we're getting the first page node. And so that should return instructions, which it did. So that's how we would access individual attributes within each of those nodes as well. So those are several commands for working with an XML document once you com converted it to an XML DOM. Let's just review those commands really quick as we end this tutorial. So first off, get elements by tag name. That's an important one. You're going to want to grab the tags you need from the XML DOM. Then you can work through, move through whatever the XML DOM using first child, last child, next sibling, previous sibling, parent node, child nodes. That allows you to traverse the XML DOM just like you could in the HTML DOM. Get attribute, important to retrieve an attribute from a particular node. You can also set attribute. So we didn't look at changing the XML file, but all of those commands are available as well. Inner HTML, we use that to find out what was inside a tag. You can also use that to set what's inside a tag if you need to change the XML. Finally, if other commands that would allow you to manipulate the XML DOM would be remove child, remove attribute, create element, create attribute. Those are some of the additional commands you could use to work with that. So if you run into XML data, converting it to an XML DOM is the easiest way to work with it. I hope you found that helpful. If so, please like the video. You can view other videos from our YouTube channel by clicking the video link in the center of the screen. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking the circle link on the left. We have a new video each week and you can visit our website where we have courses and other resources on JavaScript by clicking the link on the right. Thanks for watching.